In this episode, we're making an internet connected RGB pixel matrix clock. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Pull up a seat, get some popcorn, hang out a while. Today we're going to be talking about building an internet connected RGB pixel matrix clock. So what the heck is that? Well we're going to be using WS2812 individually addressable RGB pixels. They come in different formats such as this strip which is 144 pixels per meter, 16 by 16 matrix, or an 8 by 32 matrix. We're going to be using the 8 by 32 to scroll images, 8 bit arcade graphics, and play sounds to make a cool retro RGB clock. As you can imagine there's some complexity to that so we're going to break it up in three segments. In this episode, we'll be talking about designing and creating the circuit board, etching it out on a Nomad 883, and then finally assembling it to see it actually work. In the next episode, we'll be talking about programming the firmware to do all of the cool special effects. And finally, in the third episode, we'll be talking about the enclosure, how we're going to airbrush a custom canvas to house this RGB pixel matrix and really finish off the product. So let's go over the workbench and talk about the components. <laughs> In this project, we'll be using several components. The pixel matrix is obviously where everything will be displayed, all the graphics, animation, but we need a few more components to make it all work. For one, we need an MP3 player module. This has a micro SD card and it'll allow us to put audio files on the card to synchronize with the animation and make it really cool. In addition to that, we're gonna have an electric microphone. This microphone has a built-in amplifier circuit. It's gonna listen to the ambient room noise and we'll adjust the animations according to how loud the intensity is, basically to enhance the animation to make it interactive. In addition to that, we have a small speaker. The speaker is going to play back the MP3 files that are on the micro SD card in the MP3 player. All of that needs to be controlled by something and we're gonna use a photon. Photon makes it really easy to connect it to the internet. We can receive text messages and display them on our matrix grid. It's also powerful enough to control more than 256 RGB pixels, which this matrix consists of. Lastly, the most important part is powering all of this. Uh, these RGB pixels can consume a lot of energy and each of these pixels at full intensity for the red, green, and blue LED elements will require 20 milliamps. That multiplied by 256 RGB comes out somewhere around five and a half amps. So five and a half amp power supply for these at full intensity. Now the thing about these RGB pixels is that full intensity is almost too bright to look at. Since we're only gonna be running these at quarter intensity, we'll be able to use a power supply that can provide up to two and a half amps of current. The power supply I've selected is 12 volts and provides up to three and a half amps. Now we'll need to convert that down to the voltage for the RGB pixels, the photon, the MP3 player, and the microphone, which are all around three to five volts. To do that, we have a voltage step down, which will take an input of 12, has a potentiometer that you can adjust the output of being anywhere from three to 10 volts. And this is rated at three amps as well. So we should be good using this. So now that we've talked about all of the components, let's go over to the computer and circuits.io and start designing the actual circuit. <laughs> Circuits.io is your friend. It's free, it's open source. Well, it's not really open source, but anybody can set up an account and you can go create circuits and you can have the circuit boards made through there. But if you watch any of the previous episodes, you know that we design on circuits.io and then we export the Gerber file and we use that Gerber file to mill our own circuit boards and we can have them done in about an hour. So let's hop on circuits.io. We'll talk about adding the virtual representations of those physical components we just talked about. All right, so here we are in circuits.io. We're gonna first create the circuit that we need to make this 8-bit clock. And we need to add a few components. So the first thing we'll be adding is the DF player, which is the little MP3 player breakout module that we'll be connecting to the photon. We're only using a few pins on this, so we're going to leverage the amplifier that's built into this, as well as the serial communication so that we can send commands and tell it to play specific tracks related to the animations that we're performing on the grid. In addition to that, we also need an MP1584. It converts 12 volt to 5 volt. Next, we're going to add a particle photon. Next, we'll need a 1 by 2 header. We're going to select this pin H D 1x2. One, one is for power, one is for the speaker. We also need a 1x3. This is going to be for the optional microphone for audio input. So now that we have our components added, we're just going to wire up this circuit. It should be pretty straightforward. Essentially what we have here is a two pin header that will have 12 volts coming into it. That will come from our power supply. It will go into this converter. This, this converter converts 12 volt to a 5 volt output. The 5 volt output will then go to power the remaining accessories as well as the RGB LED 
LED matrix. So the top one is ground. We'll need to power this photon with ground. We'll also need to provide a ground to the MP3 player. And then we'll also need to send a ground output to the RGB lights. Next, we'll have a positive, which will be the, go to the voltage in on the photon. Positive will also go to the RGB lights. Positive will also go to power the MP3 player. So we only have a, a few things left. We have a couple resistors. We have to connect the communication between the MP3 player and the photon. TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX to send and receive commands. Instead of just directly wiring those, we're going to put a couple resistors in line to filter out any noise in the, that communication, which may occur between the two circuits. So we'll go TX to the resistor to the RX, and then we'll go TX from the MP3 side to the resistor to the RX on the photon. So that should buffer the basic filtering to dampen any noise or signal fluctuations coming through that line. Lastly, we have a couple things. We have a speaker connector. Those just wire up to these two pins on the MP3 player, which has a built-in amplifier. Speaker one, positive. Speaker two is the negative. Photon is going to provide a lot of other capability. It's going to be the main CPU to drive all of the RGB LEDs to create all the patterns. It's also connecting to the cloud. It's going to receive our text messages and it's going to display those on the sign while generating particle emitters and sprites and playing the sounds to make the 8-bit clock come alive. Um, last thing we have here is an optional audio microphone. This audio microphone, the Photon will use as a sensor to determine the ambient noise in the room and it can adjust its volume level as well as change the intensity of the particle system that it's generating, just to give another aspect of functionality to the display. So this is a breakout board by Adafruit, which is an amplified electric microphone with adjustable sensitivity. It has a positive, negative, and then an output. The output needs to go to an analog pin. It'll give you a value between 0 and 1024. When the CPU reads that, it's able to subsequently use those values to determine what to get a sample of the audio and determine how loud it is in the room. Last thing we need on this RGB connector, this is these are where the matrix are plugged in. We again we had the positive negative and we need a signal. That signal is going to come from D6 in our case. So all of the commands to turn on specific LEDs in specific colors will come from the D6 pin. And that's it, our circuit's done. So now that we have the circuit designed on circuits.io, the next step is to run all of the copper traces. It's important to consider the current that's being pulled through each of the traces as we draw them. So things like the RGB matrix will be pulling high current. It's important that we have wide enough traces to account for that. As opposed to the RX TX signal wires, they'll be very thin. So let's go through that process real quick. So that was easy. We've got the circuit design on circuits.io. We know that we're going to download the Gerber file from that. We'll open that up because it's just a zip file. We'll pull out a couple of those files, convert them into CNC toolpaths, and then we'll etch this thing out on the Nomad. <laughs> All right, so that was easy. Uh, Millen circuit boards on the Nomad 883 is a piece of cake. There's only a few critical things that you need to pay attention to. You need to make sure that your waste board is perfectly level. Sometimes you can surface it before you do a circuit board job. Then you always want to drill your holes and then mill your circuits before you cut out your board. Follow those basic steps and you're good to go. Now with this, we need to get a solder mask put on it, so we'll run through that process. All right, for the solder mask, we're gonna be using Dynamask today. It's a dry film solder mask, which all we really need to do is print out on some transparencies the solder mask template. We'll be using this mask to expose the circuit board and the Dynamask in UV sunlight, and then we just wash it off in an oxidizer bath to remove the uncured areas of the Dynamask. It's really straightforward, and it works really well for quick one-off prototypes. So we're gonna run through that real fast, and then we'll be assembling the components on this circuit board. <laughs> Wow. 
Whoa, now that was fast, right? Just a few components and a good circuit board and we're done in no time. We've got headers on our circuit board so that we can plug in our speaker, our microphone, our RGB matrix, our power supply, and we're good to go. But that really just concludes the, the hardware portion. We really have to write a lot of software. Fortunately, I've already done that. And we'll be covering all of that in next week's episode. So for now, we finished the hardware. We're gonna plug it in and run through and demonstrate what it actually does. So let's plug this thing in and show you what it looks like. Stand back, I'm gonna plug it in. Now cross your fingers. Right? Pretty cool. So check out some of these other animations. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. You see the particles in the background, they change to the sound. So if it's loud, you're at a party or you're playing music, then there's gonna be more particles, more background. So basically, it's got a lot of animation from these little arcade sprites that I created. And the background is based on the average background noise in the room. So when I talk, you'll see more particles. If you're playing music, then it gets even more lively. If it's quiet, then there's, there's fewer particles. Here you see the advent calendar, it's telling me how many days till Christmas. And in addition to all these default scrolling activities, I can send text directly to this photon and it will display those messages. Right now there's a default message that says have a nice day, but you can change it to whatever you want just by sending a text. In the upcoming episode we'll be talking about the Photon and how the software that I developed for it allows all of this stuff to happen. It's really straightforward, it uses several libraries and kind of mashes them up in a sense and then connects it using the Particle Cloud to receive and update the text messages. It's really straightforward. <laughs> So that's all we're gonna cover in today's episode. Hopefully it was interesting walking through that hardware process, how you can make a pretty cool RGB clock out of a few basic components. Nomad 83 to make your own circuit boards, Dynamask to get, give you a solder mask, solder it up and you're good to go. Our next episode we'll be talking about the software. The subsequent episode we'll be talking about the enclosure. The enclosure is gonna be a canvas that actually has some retro arcade graphics airbrushed on it. And so we're gonna walk through that process as well. Hang in there, hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, have fun, I'll see you next time.